The American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, A4M, is the world's leading nonprofit medical organization dedicated to the exploration and application of innovative diagnostics and therapeutic interventions that aim to prevent, detect, and treat age-related diseases. The A4M is the largest anti-aging medical society in the world, with a membership base of more than 26,000 physicians and scientists from more than 120 countries worldwide. The Academy provides CME-accredited education, board certification, fellowship training, and postgraduate education. A4M holds its conferences around the globe and has trained more than 100,000 healthcare professionals in the science of anti-aging and regenerative medicine. The future of your healthcare is in your own hands. It's not in the hands of somebody else, not in the hands of the FDA, not in the hands of the AMA, not in the hands of uh, government regulators or Obamacare. Your healthcare destiny belongs to you, and it should be a collaboration between yourself and your physician. That's the healing relationship. It should not be yourself, a government agency, another government agency, another government agency, an insurance company, the AMA, the FDA, this agency, that agency, and then your doctor over here, because guess what? Your doctor is no longer working for you, he's working for all these other people. And he must answer to all these other people instead of to you. No, the healing relationship occurs between you and your physician. And that's where health and that's where healing happens. You know, in the past, most doctors, I'd say 90 plus percent, 95 percent would want their children to go into medicine. Today, 95 percent don't want their kids to go into medicine. It's a complete reversal because they're really fed up with the medical system, with every aspect of it, because they can't be doctors anymore. They're paper pushers, they're health care providers. They can't practice the art of medicine anymore. I was getting squeezed by the insurance company, needing to prescribe medicine in a way that the insurance company told me was right, rather than the way that I felt was right. And I wasn't happy in the type of medicine I was practicing because I felt like I wasn't really helping anybody. I was writing a prescription and then they have a side effect from the drug and then you have, if you have more than one drug, then you have interactions and medicine just became a very unhappy place to be. The medicine you have to practice in primary care medicine at least is so fast paced that it's just like, okay, this disease, this drug, this disease, this drug, okay, Prozac, you got depression, you know, and you have your five favorites for each condition, you know, hypertension, lisinopril, hydrochlorothiazide, and you just, and then you gotta document, you gotta do all your coding for insurance, and then you gotta move on to the next patient. And I have a lot of trouble with that time pressure. I find myself going home, thinking all night, wondering, did I think about the right thing? What if, what if her abdominal pain was something else? And then, uh, did I miss something? Year after year, I'd find myself talking with my patients about the same thing. You know, we gotta lose weight, we gotta control the blood sugar, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. And they needed help more than what I could give them in our normal seven minute office visit. In conventional medicine nowadays, the average doctor visit only lasts six to seven minutes. So doctors, in their defense, they don't have time to figure out what's really at the root cause of what's going on. So we're a society that's now used to what's, what I call a pill for every ill. You come into the doctor's office, you complain of something going on, they write you a prescription for it. You complain of something else, they write you another prescription. There's no getting to the root cause of what might be the issue. In Western medicine, we are too influenced by the pharmaceutical companies. We tend to try to heal people with uh, drugs. Our body is like a biochemical factory. It needs nutrients in and toxins out in order to function properly. The drugs are just not part of the normal physiological biochemical equation because your biochemical factory runs on nutrients, not on drugs. When I was in medical school, it was amazing. Our entire basis for nutrition was one part of one lecture in biochemistry in the first two years of medical school. That was it for nutrition, done. In the whole four years of medical school, I had one 30-minute class on nutrition. I had taught medical school, and I know what we taught them about nutrition and biochemistry, and their knowledge was very minuscule. I was your classic, uh, traditionally trained medical doctor. I came out of Vanderbilt Medical Center, did my training at UC San Francisco, and uh, 
and uh, UCSF, and, and, and I was trained that way. I had no idea about nutrition or nutritional biochemistry or supplements, and was taught that they really didn't do anything and you didn't have to worry about them, and they were witchcraft and quackery and so forth. And then my whole mindset changed when I started seeing some family members develop uh, diseases I couldn't really manage and went back and looked at other things that were related to, at that time, alternative medicine, you know, non-traditional approaches. Many of the doctors who joined A4M or began to come to our conferences, they didn't even come for their patients. They came for their own health. They're in their 40s or 50s. They just didn't feel good. They didn't feel healthy. They were lethargic. They were sluggish. They were tired. They just felt sick. And that's why many of the doctors who came to our conference, and actually the original anti-aging patients were not women, they were men. Men worried about losing the hair on their heads and other parts of their body not being functional. And they'll pay anything, you know, you know the launch of Viagra you know, is not for a fatal disease, it's for a non-fatal disease, and it was the largest launch in the history of the pharmaceutical industry. So there's certain things people will really get behind. And many of the doctors just did not feel healthy, so they started coming to the conference, they started trying some of these various nutritional supplements or lifestyle modification or the things that we do as a matter of course, and they started to feel better and they say, wow, my patients are really like this. My patients will really benefit from this. I was introduced to the fellowship through a lecture that I had gone to. Um, I had been practicing OBGYN for maybe 15 years at that point. And actually, personally, I was feeling a little depressed and tired and frustrated. And although my health was generally good, I certainly didn't have the vigor and vitality that I was accustomed to having. And so in my search to understand why I wasn't feeling great, it opened up a new world of possibilities. I began to discover the importance of hormone balance, the importance of good nutrition, the importance of stress reduction, and all those variables in terms of um, the road back to optimal health. First thing I did was put myself in a program, put my wife in a program, talk to all my friends and, and relatives and whoever was interested. I started having them come in and get their blood levels and start putting them onto a program and they started feeling a lot better. And so the different modules covered not only the uh, hormonal effects of aging in terms of testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, which is what, what everybody talks about, but so many other aspects that involve the body, including pain and uh, chronic fatigue, all those kind of things. And I was able to learn so much more about how to actually intervene and help you know, not only my patients, but also my you know, friends and family members in this area. Preventive medicine is a whole new paradigm shift in medicine. This is not the way I was trained to do medicine in medical school. I've learned a whole new way of looking at the body. So when patients sit down with me, one of the most important things I do is I talk to them about what's going on in their lives, what the stressors are. I also talk a lot with my patients about lifestyle, including, of course, exercise. What are they eating now? And detail by detail, what are you eating in the morning? What's next, what's next? I want them to emphasize the fruits and vegetables, the lean proteins, the healthy fats. I teach them about sugars and the dangers of sugar. And I talk to them about stress management techniques. If they're stressed out, I might refer them to a counselor. I might talk to them about different stress management techniques that they can employ at home or just different changes they may need to consider making in their lives. This is really different from everything that I was taught to do in medical school. There's a lot of scientific literature available today that links emotional stress to inflammation. So when we look at our patient, yes, we can look at the physiology and at the anatomy and how it has changed and the pathology and understand the chemical processes. But I think it would behoove us if we would look at the patient in a more comprehensive picture. Don't only zone in, but zoom out. We have gotta zoom out and see a bigger perspective of what drives our patient and let the patient talk and tap into the emotional side. What stressful life situations has the patient been through to uh, arrive today at a diagnosis of fibromyalgia? It is my firm belief that it is the emotions, unresolved emotional trauma and shock, that cause the physiology to change. The difference between an anti-aging physician who goes through our training programs is he's not just a doctor, he's actually a lifestyle coach. This doctor is interested in every phase of your life, so it's necessary for the physician to spend more time with the patient. Our doctors need to know and want to know what's really going on with this patient. Listening is important. The average doctor's visit is five minutes. 
So the first thing I do is give them 30 minutes to an hour so I can really, really understand why they're there, how they are feeling, what their environment is like, what their stress situation is like, their diet, you know, really look at them completely. And it just takes time to do that. And that's why when you go see an anti-aging physician, you're going to spend a lot more time in their office because they want to really find out what's going on with you and how to fix it, not band-aid it, not give you a drug just to mask the pain you have. So now you don't on one drug or two drugs, you're on six or 10 or 12 drugs. And when you go to an anti-aging physician, generally what they're trying to do is wean you off of those drugs and get you into a more healthy lifestyle so that you're not taking two or three blood pressure medications and you don't need sleepers to go to sleep at night and uppers to get up in the morning. We're trying to change the way you function in a healthier fashion. Your body can heal itself if you allow that to happen. Today we spend more money on chronic illness than we do acute illness. And I think that's, that's where we have to find solutions. We have a hypothyroidism issue and it is an epidemic in North America. One of the reasons is our exposure to the halide group, which is chlorine, bromine, and fluoride. Swimming pools and the showers, they brush their teeth with fluoride, they get in the hot tubs with bromine, and we're doing it as children and adults. And it is a known fact, when one has a continuous exposure to the halide group, again, chlorine, bromine, and fluoride, their thyroid will not convert properly at a cellular level. It actually changes the DNA. And it stops your conversion in the mitochondria. That's a problem. So it begins to affect children. It begins to affect the adult. And it does cause a person to be obese. It does cause them to get to a place where they can't lose weight. It doesn't matter what they do. And until they deal with the fundamental problem of their hypothyroidism, weight will always be an issue. Definitely, chronic disease is on the rise more than ever. We have skyrocketing rates of obesity, of inflammatory conditions, and so many of these things are really interrelated if you think about it. So you've got obesity, and something like 66% of the population is overweight and obese together. And if you look at obesity and kind of the overlapping conditions, you look at things like type 2 diabetes or cardiovascular disease and, and metabolic types of diseases. So I think that this whole chronic disease tide that we're seeing, it's really a tsunami. And we really have to reverse this. We live in a very toxic environment. We're surrounded by toxins in the air and the water and genetically modified foods and they're just everywhere. And we've kind of lost the way because now if you have an ache or pain or you need something, take a pill. Any kind of change, can't sleep, can't get up, take a pill. We become a take a pill society. People have stopped looking at exercise first, natural way first. We're in the Far East, this has been their culture for 2,000 years. And that's why they embrace anti-aging medicine so strongly, because they understand there are natural ways and healthy ways in order to change the body for the better, whether it be natural foods or natural plants or herbs. And they're not as hung up in the quick take a pill, quick fix. They're looking more long term. That's why you'll see 70, 80, 90 year old Chinese seniors doing Tai Chi Tuan or martial arts or all kinds of exercise on a daily basis as part of their culture. Our culture is to sit in front of a TV, put on the video games or put on the movie and eat potato chips and whatever fast food we can get. And that's part of our culture, sedentary, unhealthy foods. And that's why obesity is just rampant. 80% of the diseases that doctors are dealing with today are lifestyle based. And what's so important about that is that we can change those. We can help patients change disease. We can help them reverse the course. What we've learned in the area of regenerative medicine is that through lifestyle changes, including changes in nutrition, exercise, stress management, detoxification, and management of bioidentical hormones, that we are able to help patients to a much healthier place. Uh, as an anti-aging physician, uh, do tests that I didn't do when I was just doing traditional medicine, and it gives me a lot more insight into what's going on inside the body and the body's metabolism than I got from the standard tests that I used to do. With an anti-aging physician, it is not uncommon for that doctor to draw blood uh, and to do over a hundred metabolic tests on the individual. So again, he'd get a full 
matrix, a full integrated vision of what is happening with each organ system, with each metabolic system, with each enzyme system, with each interaction. Your inflammation around your heart or your cardio CRP, that's a number that most physicians don't even look at. That's crucial. We need to know what our inflammation status is and especially the inflammation around the heart because that's a big determinant of heart disease. Some of the stool testing that we have available to look at parasites and yeast and different pathogenic bacteria, extremely sensitive and, and so far ahead of the common labs, Quest, LabCorp, and that sort of thing that often come up negative when you know there's a problem, you just can't find it. Making that diagnosis is so important. Um, there are labs that look at the Krebs cycle, which in biochemistry, um, and it's very, very important, that's the production of energy. So if someone has fatigue, for instance, it could very well be that, that their whole energy production system is, is not working. And uh, that's cellular energy as well. So healing and immunity and all of these things require energy. We actually test the Krebs cycle. We test for hormone levels. We can test for toxicities and your ability to detox. That's a, that's a big one. You know, we're all exposed to lots of toxins in everyday life, but what's your ability to detox? And do we need to feed that detoxifying system to get you to where you can process everyday exposure to, to toxins? I, I think that when you practice integrative and functional medicine, you look at everything differently. An allergist is going to look at a test for one reason, and I'm going to take an allergy test and say, if you're allergic to these things and you keep exposing your body to it, you're aging those cells, you're, it's toxic to those cells, whereas an allergist is going to give you a medication to stop the allergy, I'm going to say, this is what I think the allergy is actually doing. I actually think it's related to your headaches. I actually think that what you're eating. So I, I just look at the same test in a completely different way and explain it in such a way that it might change a patient's behavior. I've had chronic pain, bone and joint muscle pain for 20 years. 24 seven, I was not sleeping well, um, and that was the biggest thing is I couldn't take the pain anymore. So I found Body Logic, made an appointment, ran some tests. My body was so racked with inflammation, every test that he ran, it all came back the highest inflammation on every test. That was throughout my body. And he told me I need to go gluten free. Within a week, I knew there was a difference. And right now, about a year later, I'm 90% pain free. Um, I've lost 35 pounds healthier than I've ever been in my life. It's just been a huge life change. That's why they all went to medicine. All the doctors I know, at least, have gone to medicine because they want to help people. They want to be a healer. They want to make a difference. They want their treatment to be palpable and have a difference, a quality of life improvement for the patient. And at A4M, we give the doctors these tools and they keep coming back and back and back and back again for more and more and more. And they migrate their practice more and more from the old school diseased palliative model to the new school of anti-aging medicine, which is the early detection, prevention, treatment, and reversal of aging-related disorders. University Compounding Pharmacy took the lead about 15 years ago in working with American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine to teach doctors about bioidentical hormones. We have trained over 20,000 physicians on hormone replacement in conjunction with the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And we believe this has had an effect on over two million people in the United States alone, plus a demand worldwide, because we get physicians coming from all over the world to come for these educational seminars. I think the most important thing for a doctor who may not be engaged in integrative care or functional medicine or regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, um, it's to understand that your patients are already there. They want prevention programs. They want to be empowered to manage their health. The consumer has already spoken. And if you're gonna be their trusted source of information, if you're gonna be that person, you have to be open to understanding where your patient has already stepped into the world they're living in and really partner with them to empower them to live a healthier life and help their families live healthier lives. Both physicians and patients are beginning to realize that just treating a symptom or even masking a symptom, primarily with pharmaceutical drugs, is expensive, it's not effective. We all know that diseases cost a lot of money. Uh, so there really has been a shift
toward, toward wellness and prevention. And so patients are really becoming empowered to take control of their own health care. They're getting information off the internet and, and other sources. They're asking their doctor more questions than they used to. They don't want to just go in and, and have a standard blood workup and the doctor prescribes uh, a hypertension medicine or a statin and says go home. They want to talk about their whole health, their lifestyle, things they can do to improve and maintain their health. Uh, aging is part of that. This is the model of the future. It is absolutely correct. And if you don't understand it, you're going to get left in a wave of obsolete medicine. Aging is a process of biochemistry. It is not a process of candles on your birthday cake. We're moving towards a time thanks to modern technology, modern understandings of the human genome, modern understandings of uh, biochemistry and endocrinology, that we can actually control those internal circuits within the cells of our body. And we can adjust metabolism to maintain it at youthful levels. And if it's at youthful levels, you'll perform at youthful levels. And that's our goal. Our model of medicine is outdated. We look at a pill for an ill, we look at organs as silos, you go to a cardiologist for your heart or a gastroenterologist for your gut, but really the cardiologist and gastroenterologist need to be speaking to each other. And we need that type of translational medicine to happen. That's really what functional medicine is about, that's what A4M is about, that's what integrative medicine is about. It's trying to build the bridges rather than to create walls and silos. And I feel like we need to do that. We need to do that as a whole medical system so that, again, that we become health care rather than disease care, that we can help people into vitality and wellness on that trajectory rather than just moving them out of disease. We're an inclusive society. We have physicians from every specialty. We don't have a prejudice towards doctors in different fields. We embrace the physicians. You'll have an orthopedic surgeon sitting next to a neurosurgeon, sitting next to a chiropractor, sitting next to a brain surgeon, next to a hormone replacement, next to an endocrinologist and a general practitioner, all in the same row. And that's what makes it so exciting because now they're all talking the same language. You would never see these, a bunch of surgeons together with general practitioners with a nephrologist and orthopedic surgeon You'd see them at an orthopedic conference and there'd be all orthopods or endocrinology conference and they're all endocrinologists. You wouldn't see this mix, but all of these doctors have the same mindset and the same thought process. How do we take the best of the best from every specialty for our patients for maximum health? And that's the difference. That's the core difference between us because in essence, we're practicing the way everyone will practice medicine in the future. They don't know it yet, but they're gonna. We are changing the paradigm of healthcare, focusing on the early detection, prevention, treatment, and reversal of aging related disorders. That's the way healthcare will be practiced. That's the way the doctor of the future will be practicing medicine. We can actually turn back the clock. By turning back the clock, I mean improving their function, improving their memory, improving their energy, improving how much fat they have in their body, how much lean muscle mass, how much bone they have in their body. These things are all possible today. A few years ago, it was over $100,000 to sequence one individual's genome. Today, it's about $4,000. And within a short period of time, it'll be under $1,000. We should be able to look at our genes and look at our lifestyle, look at specific biomarkers and say, well, if I change this, will that biomarker go in the right direction? Alpha hydroxybutyrate, for example, correlates with insulin resistance. And if we can look out before an individual has dysglycemia, then we can change their diet, put them on a weight loss program, improve their insulin sensitivity, and uh, basically improve their, their long-term outcome. Every time I hear somebody say, anti-aging medicine is impossible, you can't change the aging process. Well, let's take a 55-year-old. He's 30 pounds overweight. He's got high blood pressure. He's got high cholesterol. He's lethargic. His sexual function is shot. His bone mass is down. His muscle mass is down. This guy looks like he's ready to slide right into the grave. Now we take this guy, we get him on the right hormone replacement program, the right nutritional program, we get him exercise, doing weight training. His bone mass changes, he's now lo he's lost 30 pounds. His lean muscle mass is much higher, his fat percentage is way down. His blood pressure has now dropped, his cholesterol has dropped. We have completely changed the physiology of this person. 
Have we anti-aged this person? Have we de-aged him? Absolutely we have. Have we changed his chronological age? Of course not. But have we changed his physiologic age? Absolutely. This is a different person now. And that's what anti-aging medicine is all about. We have a way of practicing medicine as it's never been practiced in the past. We have diagnostic tools where we can find the very earliest signs of cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative disease, arthritis, long before it ever presents clinically and interrupting that process. If you interrupt the process of disease, you never get the clinical manifestation of disease. If I can spot them five years early, 10 years early, 15 years early, before they ever manifest clinically, I can stop them, I can inhibit them, I can lock them up, I can tie them up so that they never progress to the point where they're going to affect the quality or the quantity of my potential lifespan. And so where a cancer will take away perhaps 20 years of my potential lifespan, or a heart attack will take away 30 or 40 years of my potential lifespan, or Alzheimer's will take away 10 years or 15 years of my potential lifespan. If I can detect these diseases early and I can inhibit them, I can lock them up, I can tie them in knots, I can stop the metabolic degenerative process from progressing, then I have essentially a cure for that disorder. And that is a revolution in healthcare. It means an extra 20, 30 years or more of lifespan for every man, woman, and child today who embraces the anti-aging technologies. We talk about the longevity dividend, and uh, our explanation for that is as follows. The longest lived cohort of women in the United States are uh, Asian American women in Bergen County, New Jersey. They live 91.5 years of age. On average, that's the longest living population on the planet that we know of. 91.5 years of age on average and they are enjoying the benefits of anti-aging medicine. They're well-educated, they have money, they're right across the river from New York City, and they have the access to the highest technology of medicine. They have the best insurance, they have the best health care, and they're Asian, and so their focus is on prevention. And so they enjoy the benefits of the best of the best of anti-aging medicine. Versus a similar cohort in South Dakota who are American Indians living on a reservation female American Indians, whose life expectancy is about 64 years of age. If you look at that difference, it's about 25 years difference. Now why is that? Why are women in South Dakota living on an Indian reservation, who are getting free health care by the way, who are getting the very best government offered HMO Indian service health care that's available, free, and they live 64 years of age, and the women in Bergen County who pay for their health care are living 91 years of age. What is the difference? The difference is just that. It's the anti-aging preventive medicine model of healthcare versus the government's model of HMO state-issued healthcare. That's a 25-year difference. And that's the longevity dividend as it stands today. All things have humble beginnings and A4M we had ours as well when we started out. We only started out with 12 doctors who we flew to Chicago to discuss developing a whole new field of medicine, which we ended up terming anti-aging medicine. And our first conference was not really much to speak of. We had maybe 30 people, two booths, um, 10 guys giving lectures on just their particular interest. And you know, it was all just a very tiny start. It was a brand new field, a brand new thought process. And you never really know where things are going to go. After our initial conference in Cancun, we moved it to the Alexis Park Resort. We went from 30 people or 25 people to 150 people. Then we went from 150 to over 300, and then to 5, 600, then to 800, then to 1,000, 1,500. So starting from just a dozen guys or so and one or two booths to hundreds and hundreds of booths and thousands of people and tens of thousands of members from over 120 countries, it's quite an exciting progression. I've seen American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine really evolve from a more of a exhibiting convention to a high level of education. Well, when we got started in this in 1992, the uh, healthcare establishment was focused primarily on disease-based medicine, on the treatment of acute disease, and really not much in the way of uh, intervention for chronic degenerative disease. That was quote-unquote gerontology, you know, just make people feel okay, 
I give them a pill, you know, put a Band-Aid over it, you know, uh, just, just give them some palliative care because that's all they did have. We had a number of parties who were very interested in seeing that we did not survive, that we did not grow as an organization, that this field did not change the way people were looking at medicine because they liked it the old way. And the old way meant you're old, you're sick, stay that way and we'll keep pumping you up with whatever medications are the ones that are the most profitable. For the first time in history, we would say that aging is not inevitable. For the first time in history, we would say that aging is a treatable condition. We are the first scientific medical society to proclaim aging is not inevitable. And it pissed off in a big way uh, the powers that be in establishment medicine. Realize that gerontology controls well over a trillion dollars in healthcare funding, from nursing homes to Medicare to drug therapies to medical education, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's a big, big, big industry. And we came along and started kicking the tires and shaking the fenders and said, hey, wait a second, you know, this old rust bucket of an automobile needs a, a, a redo. And uh, the amazing thing is, is that we succeeded. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. After 20 years uh, and all the abuse that came from it, it turns out that the government spent over a million dollars, uh, and uh, by some reports, uh, many millions of dollars, to uh, debunk uh, anti-aging medicine and to uh, uh, cast anti-aging physicians in a very, very uh, dim light. And uh, they actually won an award for a commercial that was done specifically uh, trying to uh, insinuate that anti-aging was nothing more than snake oil and was nothing more than fortune tellers and Madame Eterna reading a big crystal ball trying to foretell the future and that uh, you shouldn't pay any attention to those those guys over there, those anti-aging doctors, what do they know? We're the old line gerontologists, we got our bow ties and our suspenders and we've got all of our grants and our research budgets that are all focused around grow old and die there's nothing else that can be done. We'll make you a little bit more comfortable in the process. That was the gerontological vision of aging. But 20 years hence, technology has advanced. 20 years hence, the anti-aging revolution has advanced. And now the paradigm is different. Now the paradigm is moving in our direction towards preventive-based medicine. And that's been the success of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Over the past 20 years, anti-aging has grown from a uh, market size of zero dollars to uh, something like 169 billion dollars right now and it's continuing to increase at about nine and a half percent per year. It was really a, a small cottage industry of very very tiny companies and these have now grown into multinational concerns whether it be in the areas of compounding, nutrition, diagnostics, laboratory testing. It's now become highly specific, highly scientific and this has been very fulfilling and exciting to see these industries grow around and as part of the field of anti-aging and regenerative medicine. The University of Compounding Pharmacy took the lead about 15 years ago in working with the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine to teach doctors about bioidentical hormones. This is not a subject that's taught in medical school. Bioidentical hormone replacement requires additional education for a physician and taking fellowships, taking educational seminars so they can learn this stuff because there's not, you can't open up a PDR and just learn and find out about these drugs. As the drug companies got into the market, they were looking for things that were patentable because patentable gives them protection of 15 years or so. So the only way you can do that is to modify the structure of the chemical. Because anything that occurs in nature, like an estrogen or a thyroid, cannot be patentable because it exists in nature. And the body makes it normally. So by putting a different molecule, attaching it to the natural thing, they can get a synthetic drug, but the body is not used to it. It doesn't fit the lock and key mechanism. So it will get some effect of the hormone, but there's also the potential for side effects. And that's the concern as opposed to a compounded drug where it's made especially for you and no one else. Using bioidentical hormones that are based on your symptoms and your lab tests to get the right strength of the hormone. It's a multifaceted way of prescribing. It's just not take one pill and hope that everything works. Our goal is to assist the physician in finding the right medication for the patient and the right strength 
and finding a good source of, of chemical for that patient. Just because you buy a chemical and it has this name on there doesn't mean that it has the same quality as another brand. Almost all chemicals come from overseas, either India or China. Some of the companies are monitored by the FDA, most aren't. So you have to trust the pharmacist. We spend a lot of money on technology. We spend a lot of money on testing. The Board of Pharmacy in California uses us as a model for the way they want compounding pharmacies to build their pharmacy and how to operate them. We are respected by the physicians. They know, they trust us. I mean, it's a big part of our business is assuring that what the patient is getting is exactly the right drug and in the right strain. SpectraCell is a CLIA certified specialty clinical laboratory. We're looking for deficiencies in micro quantities of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, antioxidants. And what's unique about what we do is that we're able to measure the, the function of those nutrients at the white cell level. This is not to say that a static measurement in blood is inaccurate, but if you simply look at nutrients in blood, you're not really determining whether they're functioning in the patient's immune system. So by determining those deficiencies of vitamins and minerals at the white cell level, we're giving the physician much more clinical information, a real window into how his patients biochemical and physiological processes are working. And we know that through targeted repletion, that is correcting the deficiencies that we determine, that we can improve cell performance, improve health, improve healthy aging, and relate them specifically to more positive outcomes for the patient. The telomere is like the cap on the end of a shoelace, and it's a cap on a chromosome, and in essence that cap prevents fraying or dissolution. Uh, so as that cap deteriorates and gets shorter over time, it means cellular deterioration at a faster rate. So it actually is a very accurate predictor, not necessarily pinpointing this person has a life expectancy of 27.2 years, but pinpointing whether a 60-year-old has cellular function of a 40-year-old or an 80-year-old. We were the first laboratory to introduce this testing in the United States commercially. It had always been a research tool, but now it is generally reimbursed through insurance and many patients are having the test done to determine how healthily they're aging. We now know that over 50% of patients who suffer myocardial infarctions have normal cholesterol levels. So there's more to uh, cardiovascular disease than just cholesterol. Our lipoprotein testing determines the size and the quantity of the various lipoproteins. And we now know that the size of these particles determines the risk level that are associated with their presence. These lipoprotein particles, like tiny balls floating through the bloodstream, those are the delivery agents for cholesterol. And so if you have a lot of little lipoprotein particles, they are doing a better job, unfortunately, of delivering cholesterol uh, th through the arteries. And so that's why it's an independent test because regardless of your cholesterol score, your score might be normal. But if you have a bad score for lipoprotein particles, it, it still means you're getting more cholesterol deposited in your arteries than is healthy. So what we do here at Metagenics in our metaproteomics lab, we screen extracts of phytochemicals in models of disease. So a model might be uh, an inflammation model of rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis or uh, insulin resistance using macrophages, monocytes, fat cells, muscle cells, etc and we look at specific endpoints. So for example, if we're looking for an anti-inflammatory as a nutraceutical or a medical food, for example, we can look at drugs and we can say, well, there's aspirin. We know that it's a COX-1 and COX-2 direct inhibitor. We can look at the more specific COX-2 inhibitors like Celebrex and Biox, and we can say, well, were they an improvement? 
Did they really prevent GI problems? What were the side effects that they've had? And we can look at that body of data and we can say, well, perhaps we've got another approach. Maybe nature is really smart. And these phytochemicals, maybe they're modulating these signaling systems. So identifying anti-inflammatories, anti-diabetic compounds, insulin sensitizers from natural plants, it's been our premise that these will be safer compounds. They may not have the extraordinarily potent IC50s of certain drugs, but on the other hand, the safety profile should be dramatically better. So we have about 350 different products, and that's just domestic United States and in the Americas. And the way that we see those products is to categorize into what we call chronic illness areas, CIAs, so another meaning for CIA. But it's essentially looking at these different um, clinical condition buckets, if you will. So cardiometabolic syndrome, looking at inflammation, hormonal health, looking at detoxification, uh, looking at just general wellness. So for our practitioners and our customers, what's helpful is just to see how these products can fit into certain protocols for clinical conditions that are associated with those chronic illness areas. Today, the thyroid drug is the second largest prescribed drug in the world. Unfortunately, that's synthetic, synthetic T4. Not a bioidentical hormone, and as such, is viewed by the body as a foreigner. And it's not giving those who aren't converting the T4 to a T3 at a cellular level, the T3 they need. So naturally desiccated thyroid, being bioidentical as it is, is a much better medical protocol than what is being used today worldwide. We've been around since 1934, and we're the longest naturally desiccated thyroid company in the marketplace and in America. Our company has over 7,000 doctors that are clients. We sell to wholesalers, pharmacies all over the country in different parts of the world. We believe that the utilization of naturally desiccated thyroid is a much better medical protocol to be using for anybody that has hypothyroidism or even Hashimoto's. There was a study done in the late 90s by the Hertog family out of Belgium. They were actually commissioned by one of the large pharmaceutical companies to show that Synthroid was much superior to naturally desiccated thyroid. In this study, over several years, what the Hertogs discovered, and there are four generations of endocrinologists, they discovered that naturally desiccated thyroid, hands down, beat synthetic thyroid in every single category. Well, the study was poo-pooed, obviously, and put down and never published, but the Hertogs have it, and we've been fortunate enough to get it. We use the charts to show doctors, hey, here it is. Read it for yourself. To be honest with you, most don't. But for those that do, in every case, they've always come back and said, I didn't know. I had no idea that this information was here. I was told in college this was the issue. But now I can see it's quite obvious that naturally desiccated thyroid is a much better treatment protocol than synthetic T4, and it is. Energy medicine is nothing new. It has been around for thousands of years, and in different cultures. You have Ayurvedic medicine, you have a traditional Chinese medicine, and you look at uh, homeopathy that Hahnemann invented in uh, Germany over 150 years ago. That's homeopathic remedies that uh, are a form of energy again. But energy medicine is something that every physician and scientist in a clinical environment uses today on a daily basis. They may not call it energy medicine, but can you imagine a hospital today without an EKG, EEG, an ultrasound, or an MRI device? Well, that's all measuring the energy, the electrical output of the brain, of the heart, 
or with an MRI and taking a picture of an obstruction and using pulsating electromagnetic fields. Acupuncture, if you take that for example, is a form of energy medicine and has been around for thousands of years. And acupuncture uses a grid, the grid of the meridians, and the meridians are energy pathways. And when a trained traditional Chinese medicine doctor, for example, would look at their patient and there would be neck pain, they would know where to place an acupuncture needle in a, either a meridian point or in an acupuncture point to redistribute energy and to redistribute the flow of uh, fluid. Now when we take of a more modern approach, which is the Ondamed system, Ondamed takes the body off the grid. We do not need meridians and acupuncture points to stimulate the body to relieve tension, to relieve inflammation and to relieve pain. And what Ondamed does is we are sending vector-driven focused fields, pulsating fields, into the uh, patient's body while feeling the patient's uh, radio pulse, so stimulating the system, and then we are receiving the feedback. We can get to the underlying reason of why the pain is there and stimulate the dysfunctional side responsible for the pain. It is uh, an intelligent system that helps us to get a different perspective of the patient to find uh, dysfunctional tissue areas that uh, may be areas of infection, of inflammation, scar tissue, emotional trauma or shock that is unresolved and still residing on a cellular basis in form of a memory. It all boils down to an area in the body that is inflamed that while we know the white blood cell count is up, we don't know where the inflammation is sitting and the Ondamed reveals that information with the help of the patient. Ondamed can be the centerpiece of a medical practice or it can be an adjunct. We're stimulating immune functions, we're stimulating lymphatic flow, we're helping the body to detoxify is essential for nutrients and bioidentical hormones and, and pharmaceuticals, etc., to actually get to the cell and be assimilated in the way that we wish. So we can accelerate the healing process of a patient when adding on them it to existing treatment modalities. In traditional medicine, which is primarily covered by insurance, most of our patients come from the insurance book. But in this field, as the doctors attempt to get into this form of medicine, where insurance, insurance is primarily not involved, they're having a great deal of trouble actually finding patients to come to their practice. And even when those patients come, they're having even more difficulty in how to manage the entire administrative process of actually doing the work. Because what doctors really need to do, and doctors that are brilliant really want to do, is actually just spend their time with patients in consultations and helping with the health. It's really not their avenue to want to worry about accounting and technology and legal issues or, or even marketing or administrative and operations or the billion other things you have to do to effectively run an office. And the first few doctors that came to me were primarily looking for me to solve that for them. How on earth would I be able to start a practice, a brand new practice, in a brand new town where I didn't know anybody and nobody knew me? And how would I ever find patients? Then I met Patrick Savage and learned about BodyLogic MD and found out that I would be able to create a practice from the ground up and that's exactly what they helped me do. They make a complete business plan that's going to show you how many patients you're going to get per month, what you're going to make per month, and when you're going to be able to pay your loans back, etc. It's a whole financial model. It's all the stuff that we're not really trained to do as doctors, which is being a business owner. BodyLogic MD really has you covered, which was a real great comfort to me in starting my practice. Also, one of the great things about practicing with BodyLogic is the access to a network of doctors who are all doing the same thing. Anytime I have a question on a tough patient, I'll be emailing the other doctors in the network and they email back and we have a constant exchange, I call it a brain trust, if you will, of the most highly trained physicians doing preventive medicine. There's about 50 of us right now, the network is still growing and it's an incredible resource for me every single day. One of the things that really drew me to BodyLogic MD was uh, 
not having to do all of the marketing, not having to do all of the business aspects of that where I could really focus on my education and patient care. And then the, an extension of that was this network of physicians that have a vast amount of knowledge and experience between them that I can access at any time. I'm often asked, I mean, which doctors move into this field of medicine? And the answer is all of them. All of the ones that are passionate and brilliant and really want a career where they're working with patients on health. But they come from every specialty. It's really not any one. I mean, they, they ask me, is it, is it OBGYNs that are moving in here or endocrinologists and, or, or is it emergency room or family practice, internal medicine, pain medicine? And the answer is yes, it, it's all of them. One of the other differences between these practices and traditional medicine is a physician that's very successful in this field may have up to four, maybe 500 patients uh, at any one time that's actively seen them. They don't have the thousands and thousands and thousands of charts that they may see the patient once every four years when they remember to have their annual physical. H4M represents a new way of looking at health and illness, whether it's within stem cell research or uh, the ways in which new hormones can be applied for various conditions or disease states. And it's a very exciting place to be in that regard. Having been in an academic institution for a long time where while um, progress is made in very small increments, A4M represents a space where people can take leaps forward in the way that they uh, look at health and illness. Uh, there are very few institutions or organizations that allow for that kind of out-of-the-box thinking in a sense. A4M has been an agent of change. It has really moved society in many different ways. And it's done that by educating physicians. That's really what we do. We're a physician organization. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We're a public charity. Uh, we are there primarily to present and to identify new technologies and offer this information to physicians to educate them to practice better health care, to practice health care that's focused on finding the cure uh, that's focused uh, not on palliative care, not just take a pill and maybe feel better, but actually let's get to the root. A4M has created really the first dynamic educational program internationally that we've ever had to teach people metabolic uh, medicine and integrated medicine where we really look at non-prescription, non-pharmacologic therapies, which are really the new paradigm, I think, in healthcare. At the A4M, we have a whole array of training programs and fellowship programs in everything from aesthetic and cosmetic medicine, stem cell therapeutics, sports medicine, anti-aging, regenerative medicine, functional medicine, nutritional medicine, lifestyle modification. Just across the whole breadth, there are so many areas and we're always adding more and more types of programs to really zero in and give the physician the tools they need so they can really change their patient's life. Not just give a med, but what can you do to truly change the patient's life and have the education and the knowledge base so that you can affect that change. We're building a better physician. We're building a better healthcare practitioner who understands that medicine doesn't stop with the treatment of acute disease. That medicine doesn't stop until we've conquered the degenerative diseases we call human aging. Be part of the future. Be part of the anti-aging revolution. Thank you.